back to advancing with watercolor and today we're going to look at interiors and some of the challenges and thoughts in working with the interior. Uh, one of the first things uh, we notice in an, uh, with interiors is we're working with people and uh, this case in this case I've chosen a coffee shop uh, one of my favorites which is the um, Tate coffee shop on Huntington Avenue up in Boston wonderful light comes in here beautiful white tiled floors white walls um, beautiful lighting and those are the things that I take notice of are how light is affecting the scene um, I want to capture that light that's streaming in from the windows gives some directional brush strokes to indicate that light uh, the surfaces are highly reflective so I want to make I want to exploit those reflections on the table surfaces and then of course the kind of uh, coffee shop poses, if you will, the barista, the uh, people enjoying coffee, uh, vendors selling products, and so on. I make note of these, and uh, the figures that I include are all kind of out of my head, pretty much. I mean, it's I've been studying them for a while, so I have a little bit of a library in my mind about figures and how they they sit at the counter or how they. Uh, work the espresso machine and so on. But what I'm in this painting, my focal point will be the barista. And so I'm going to use a, a light area behind him, uh, which is the window, and uh, light uh, coming in through the window, falling on the distant figures, creating silhouettes in the near figures. And the figure that's closest to me is the barista, and I want to really. Um, put uh, make him into a dark figure against the light. So uh, the strategy here is to use a um, light background and light on the table surfaces to <clears throat> again kind of give a directional flow to the to the source of light, which is the windows. In this first stage, I'm setting up the light tones, or we can say the light shapes of the uh, curving countertop. Uh, the brightly lit windows behind and some of the highlights that I see or anticipate on the espresso machine or the back wall or uh, the tops of chairs and so on and once I get those established I move to um, my center of interest which is this um, espresso machine. I, I love the way the light glints off it. I love the shape that it creates. And I love the product that it produces. I'm a kind of coffee-holic, if you will. And uh, this is sort of part of my morning, uh, is visiting a coffee shop and in no hurry at all. I sketch, I um, watch, watch the unfolding of the day and on a bright day like today I enjoy the light so much and that is really um, the reason for this is to create the sort of light that's passing through the scene it's almost uh, incidental the the objects that I put into the painting because I feel the light is uh, what's creating the beauty so you can see here's my main focal point which is this barista um, making my coffee and the other things that will be added will be complementary I'm going to try and put in some interesting activity at the counter certainly exploit uh, the reflective nature of the counter and also uh, a hint of the public lighting and, and shapes of windows and so on but uh, this is another way of working sometimes we work from light to dark really establish uh, the light areas, move to the mid-tones. In this case, my mid-tone is actually quite light, and I'm working with uh, uh, a lot of darks. This high polarity, high contrast in light and dark is the under... Uh, well, it's, it's the main focus of this painting. Uh, so I move on to the, the smaller figures and uh, the reflections on the, the countertop. One of the things that I like in particular about this cafe is its openness. Um, some cafes with different character, they 
have they create more of a dark, moody uh, feeling, which I enjoy also. I'll be honest, I enjoy that sort of cave-like uh, feeling also. It's very comforting to me, and uh, I see the same sorts of figures, the same sort of activity. This is more bright and luminous, and the white walls, the, the white floor, all accentuate that. They give it a real luminosity. Light is just bouncing everywhere. And I want to refer to that in some of the uh, angled strokes that I'm doing. They're improvised a little bit, um, but they kind of create the feeling that light is, is moving from left to right and uh, coming in through the windows. And uh, <clears throat> keep working towards those highlights, the bright white areas, and preserving those, in some sense connecting those as well. And... Um, all the while thinking about how uh, the mid-tones, the lights, and the darks are in some way connected, not left uh, strewn about the painting, but integrated into a bigger shape or integrated into a bigger passage. When working in the coffee shop, usually I'm working in a sketchbook, or more recently my iPad, in which I develop a a sketch but more like a watercolor. The, the program that I like to use is called Sketches and it has a watercolor feature. I've grown, I've practiced it uh, with it a lot. In fact it's taken me about I would say a good year to get comfortable with the tool set and how it works. And since uh, managers don't like to see you really bring out your full set of watercolors onto your table and, and start painting, I've got uh, gotten used to using the iPad. It's much more discreet and <clears throat> uh, flexible. It's still no substitute for pencil and paper, or especially, uh, let's say, watercolor and paper. But it's a uh, portable, it's effective, and it leads to the uh, idea of doing a watercolor, for me anyway. Well, you can see the painting is starting to um, become something. Uh, the Mid-tones are connected, the darks are connected, and they're really focused on the light that's uh, moving through the painting. So at this point, I'm very pleased with the piece, and we'll only add some small, uh, sharp darks to accentuate areas, make an area feel more luminous, uh, build on what I've already placed. Nothing major will enter the scene at this point. I've been doing uh, more and more of these interiors. Uh, for some, It's an interesting genre to me because um, it presents a whole different sort of uh, feeling, this interior. And it's an interior that's part of our daily lives. Uh, I know that the coffee shop these days, especially in the United States, has grown, has really rocketed into popularity and they've kind of become a mainstay in in our modern culture and uh, it's always been uh, an important part of the European culture and something that we always enjoy when we're traveling now that's part of our daily culture as well and the quality and the availability of different types of things has, has changed and I and the people that are, or let's say the the owners of these shops, they're making a lot of strides into making it a unique experience. The Tate is one of those which gives us a really unique quality in the way that they choose to uh, decorate the place, uh, keep it open to the light, um, and these sorts of things. So I pick up on the as a visual artist, I pick up on those and those things that appeal to me, I really try to exaggerate and uh, make them part of the painting. So you can see we got a little bit of a story here between uh, figures at the counter and Barista's taking care of everybody, making sure that uh, things are moving along, the reflections are working well, the uh, angle light on the far wall, the figures in the distance, um, all coming into to a nice relationship, a nice visual relationship. Basically in this painting I'm just using a single color uh, neutral tint 
which is a black. And the quality that I like of neutral tint is that it, it's not warm or cool. It's um, pretty neutral, <laughs> as the name would indicate. And so, and also, I, I like painting more and more with uh, doing more and more tonal work because it's less distracting. You know, when we're <clears throat> working with a palette, a full palette, um, we're often trying to match color, and I found that that is a real hindrance uh, to my workflow. S some things are I can simplify. Other times I'm guessing at colors, and I find that to be a distraction. When I'm working with tonal values, lights and darks in a single color like I am today, it's, it's clear, and I can really concentrate on other things such as shape, edges, uh, lights and darks more readily. So, at least when I'm doing uh, sketches, preparations for larger pieces or pieces that I know will <clears throat> develop into uh, colored works, I like to start with this because it gives me a foundation. It gives me a, a sort of readiness for color. And then if I am able to work up a design that I like, um, color can be really flexible. And what I mean by that is... It doesn't have to be exact in any way. We can substitute a num um, any warm color, any warm hue. We can substitute cool hues as well and play with that aspect, exaggerate that aspect. So this is a, an important uh, preparation for me. And I really recommend this, especially if you're working in the field and uh, uh, there's enough distractions in the field to warrant simplifying the palette and making your choices less and, and being able to concentrate on the, the shapes and so on. Well, I guess I'm really enjoying myself here because I'm working with the small brush, working down on the, the furl, uh, which, mean, which tells me, which tells you that I'm just playing with details here, adding details to my center of interest. Um, there's a lot of things to paint, and I'm kind of enjoying just putting lines and edges and, and refining it with little touches, dots and lines, and uh, working into the, the final aspect of it. One thing that I'm very happy about is the light. Here's the finished piece. The light is, is quite strong as I was hoping it would be and that is created by the strong contrast of light against dark. Even the middle tones are quite quite deep. Uh, it's absolutely necessary to create this uh, glowing light that's in the painting. So I hope you are enjoying this and I hope you venture out and do some interiors of your own.